So before the controversial DP Ruto interview, a few highlights of stuff that you may have missed. Okay. Now, the former managing director of Kenya Re has been fined 15.2 million. For what? For embezzling, for being found guilty of embezzling 7.2 million. Okay? So he's being, uh, he's being fined almost double what he embezzled. Not jailed, he's being fined. Now, on the same day, in a Kibira court, a Kibira laborer yeah, who was found guilty of stealing safari boots worth Kenya shillings 2500 about $25, and 400 shillings, about $4, from a border border operator, is jailed for 20 years. Same country, same laws, only in Kenya. I don't have anything more to say about that. This next one, I'm sure many of you missed. A Mombasa woman called Betty Olaba is threatening to commit suicide. Why? Because her mother, her dear mother, she caught her dear mother red-handed in a lodging with her husband having sex. Her husband's name is David Mwangi. Yes, you heard me right. Her own mother, her blood mother, the woman who gave birth to her with her husband. And the last item, I had a very big argument with uh, Hezron. Hezron says, Chris, Bwana, this is not news. Unajua mambo ya news ni dog, man bites dog, not dog bites man. Ukishazoya dog bites man, inakuwa stale, inaisha lather. It becomes too normal. So look for man bites dog. Uh, you stood watch and I. <laughs> Translation, Chris, this is not news. It's only news when the man bites the dog. If the dog bites the man, and it happens so frequently, it ceases to be news. Well, let me just say, I thought you wanted to know. Yeah, and I think I'm right. A 24-year-old woman called Joan Mnene who is a fourth year student at Kenyatta University, okay, claims, claims that she is four weeks pregnant with a baby belonging to the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. The lady is not saying Serakali Saidia. The lady is saying Wanainchi Saidia. And I'm not sure how she wants people to help her. Yeah, this student who is seeking a Bachelor of Science degree in leisure and recreation management at the Kenyatta University. She is complaining that unlike before, she can no longer reach baby daddy. Now in a way I agree with the Hezron, this is not news, especially for a man who has confessed in the past to being Baba Abi. You remember that one? But I don't want to say anything more. Yeah, <laughs> let me just leave it at that. Now we'll go for a very brief commercial break and when we come back, we will dive straight in to this very controversial interview that the Deputy President gave to a TV station. Stay with me. Welcome back. Now, there should be no doubt, absolutely no doubt, on the mind of any Kenyan that Hussein Mohammed is the best interviewer yeah, in the press that we have in the country at the moment. There should be no doubt. He is very persistent. Yeah, once he starts in a certain line of uh, questioning, he will not cease until he gets an answer. The guy is very good. And the advantage of having somebody like Hussein Mohammed interviewing a politician that Kenyans want to confirm certain things, while others want to take a closer look at yeah, whether or not their presidential material, is that there is no way yeah, you're going to come out of such an interview without seeing the truth right in front of you. Now, you know, seeing the truth in a politician is not easy. Yeah, because politics is a game of lying and not being caught. <laughs> when you lie 
and you get caught, then now you become a liar. But if you lie and you never get caught, people call you a good politician. And by the way, I'm talking about the world over, not just in Kenya. Now, this one is for the sake yeah, of those of us who get very upset when a politician lies. I, how could he tell a lie? How? This is crazy. Why is he lying? <laughs> Relax. That's normal for politician. Yeah. And as I've said, the only difference or the only rule is thou shall not get caught in your lies. Now, later on in this video, I shall give you a simple trick or a tip yeah, that will enable you to be able to conclusively yeah, identify the times, the number of times the deputy president told lies on this live television interview on Citizen TV. Now, of course, this is the interview that birthed that big controversy about the alleged meeting yeah, after the elections between DP William Ruto and Raila Odinga. The deputy president claims that Raila made contact or tried to make contact four times. He even claims they spoke on the phone yeah, at, at one juncture. And the deputy president told Kenyans yeah, the gist of that conversation is that Raila Odinga was telling Ruto that he has had a raw deal, yeah, that he should reconsider his situation and his position within the Jubilee Party. Bila Kizungumingi, what the Deputy President is telling us, is that Raila tried to pull him to his side so that they fix President Uru Kenyatta politically. And they were supposed to do this using DP Ruto's numbers and influence within Parliament and also Raila Odinga's numbers and influence within Parliament. And <laughs> on the surface of it, it would have been very easy. Now, there's a very simple and conclusive test yeah, to determine whether the deputy president was telling lies. Yeah, and as I said, we shall come to that towards the tail end of this video. So stay with me. Now, the truth about this interview is that the deputy president was cornered. And I can already hear DP Ruto supporters taking in this video saying to me, Chris, we know you hate the deputy president. We know you don't like the deputy president. I can already hear them saying that. But I'm sorry. I'm just stating facts which we all saw and which we can all verify because this particular interview is available on YouTube. I love this situation because for once, yeah, anybody will be able to verify who is out of line in this instance. Me or DP Ruto diehard supporters. And by the way, I've put a link to that uh, interview, yeah, which the deputy president recently had with Hussein Mohammed of Citizen TV at his residence. Yeah, it's on the top uh, right hand corner of your screen right now. So you can click on it when you finish taking in this video. You can go and uh, watch the entire very long video, <laughs> very long interview for yourself. It is super fascinating. Trust me. Now, I know the burning question <laughs> I've put on your mind. Yes. How exactly was the deputy president cornered? Well, he was cornered in many instances. Yeah, but the most obvious and the most glaring and the most shocking from where I sit was when he was trying very hard yeah, to put across the idea that he's fully behind President Uru Kenyatta, but is against Raila Odinga. Or rather, as he said, Raila Odinga has a history of breaking up political parties. Yeah, and he gave the example of Kanu. And therefore, the deputy president said, Raila Odinga's mission in the handshake is just to break Jubilee. Yeah, he has come into the executive, he's very influential in the executive, but his intentions are not good. Now, DP foot soldiers are on record for directly attacking the president. Yeah, but Ruto himself, the deputy president, has never directly attacked the president. But it is true, what your foot soldiers say is what you're saying. Yeah, because your foot soldiers, your very close supporters, cannot say anything that contradicts what you stand for. That is the truth. Still, the deputy president was trying to sell us this idea that he's fully behind the president. 
and that is only some people who are trying to interfere yeah, with that closeness, but they will not succeed. The deputy president was trying to sell the idea to Kenyans that Jubilee is still solidly united. It's still a party, yeah, despite the threats by one Raila Odinga. But Hussein Mohammed, using his questions, managed to prove that this is a ridiculous lie. The high point for me in this particular discussion was when Hussein Mohammed proved yeah, that there's no way that can be the truth. Because everything the deputy president is saying, everything the president, the deputy president is doing, is contradicting yeah, what he's trying to sell to Kenyans. You publicly attack your own director of criminal investigations, appointed by the executive. How? How do you do that? And yet you are the appointing authority. And then, in sharp contrast, the president of the Republic of Kenya praises the directorate of criminal investigations. He praises them so much that he goes beyond that and honors George Kenoti with a national award. Yeah, remember last December? He was honored. He was decorated by the president as a true national hero. For anybody who was paying attention, the deputy president was completely cornered so that he looked like <laughs> he's just telling lies during the day. Which brings us to that question. How is it possible yeah, even without following the, the debate, even without closely following what they're saying, to determine when the deputy president is telling a lie and when he's not. I shall reveal that secret 